All right, guys. So, hey, we're getting this call started today. I'm excited. We got Daniel Kirby as our guest uh, host today, and uh, he's just killing it. Um, he's always innovating and come up with new ways to get in touch with clients and help protect them. So he's going to go over some of that stuff today with us. So um, if you guys don't have your video screens on, it means you're not paying attention. Turn them on. Get your notepads ready. He's going to give us some amazing tips. How are you doing there today, Kirby? I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself? Doing all right, man. Thanks for joining us. Um, awesome. some, some quick questions I want to ask you so some people can hear some history. How long have you been in the business for? So uh, I've actually been in the industry for a little over three years, um, but I've been uh, with FFL for coming up on about a year and a half now. About a year and a half. Okay. And then what's your highest uh, week as far as protecting families since you've been at FFL? Uh, the most families I've protected in a week has been 37. 37 families, guys, in one week. In one week. So pretty incredible. How about for the month? What's your highest month as far as family? Uh, my highest month currently is, I believe, 53, 54. That's amazing. Okay, so 54 families, guys. Just imagine if you protect 54 people in one month. Now, when you first started, you know, how long did it take you, you know, when you came with FFL, how long did it take you to write your first policy? Oh man, uh, uh, weeks. Weeks, right? So, but you kept pushing through. How did, how many times did you want to quit? And you're like, I'm giving up on this. Oh, I think I legitimately quit about 15 times. <laughs> and then you're glad that you haven't quit now, right? I am. I am. You know, my, my upline, uh, Juan, uh, he's actually a good friend of mine. Um, we, we talk about this all the time and, uh, especially after the, the first time it happened, the first time I protected 10 families in a week, uh, it was probably about, about maybe five or six months into me being here. And, you know, he asked me and he was like, Hey, you know, Daniel, if I told you that, you know, your first four or five months was, was going to be, was going to be a struggle. You were going to have to grind. It was going to be physically tough, mentally tough. Um, but at the end of it, you would be, you know, helping 10 families a week, you know, he, would you do it all over again? And the answer is absolutely, you know, I'd, I'd absolutely do it all over again to know that, you know, that, that time spent, you know, kind of getting my butt kicked and, you know, learning and training, uh, kind of gave me the, it kind of gave me the uh, condition um, to be able to, to kind of go out and do it every single week, right? And also kind of helped me understand that if I don't have a good week, um, that it's okay, right? You know, that it, it does happen, right? You know, there was a uh, another time where uh, appointments wise, uh, I think I, I went O for for 22. And this was, you know, while I was I was doing pretty decent. And, you know, I, I called a couple guys and I was like, you know, what am I doing wrong? You know, I, I couldn't get anybody, you know, I couldn't get anyone to show up, I couldn't make a sale. And I was like, what, what am I doing wrong here? And every single person told me nothing. You know, they said, hey, you're not doing anything wrong. Like, just just keep doing it. You know, have the same thing. Have another 22 appointments. And and lo and behold, the next seven in a row, I closed. Right. So it's it's really is, you know, at the end of the day, it, it's it, end of the day. It's a numbers game. Um, it's, you know, putting the numbers in your favor and just giving yourself the most opportunities, knowing that. If, if you have a bad week, it's okay. Just keep doing the same work. Um, be consistent and, you know, it's, it's going to always work out for you as long as you stack it in your favor. I love it. I love it. Now for the new agents that, you know, we have a lot of them that are starting their business now, right? What would you say were the three major mistakes that you made early on and that you'd like to share with some of the newer agents on the call to not repeat that same pattern? So first mistake is work ethic. Um, you have to, you have to be a dog when it, when it comes to, to working in this industry, working in this business. Um, you don't have to necessarily have the knowledge. You don't have to have the, the sales technique 
you don't have to be perfect at presenting. You don't have to be perfect at overcoming objections. You just have to be willing to work harder than everybody else. And as long as you're willing to work harder than everybody else, you know, those, those things will come. Right. So that's number one, right. Is just, just kind of like not giving up and, and really act, actually putting in the work and not just telling yourself that you're going to do it. Um, the second thing is going to be mindset. Um, so mindset was a big, big problem that I had, you know, I was afraid of rejection. I was afraid of people telling me, no, I was afraid of, you know, getting leads and, and not being able to protect families, um, that I kind of, you know, would take a step back each week and not really do as much as I needed to or do as much as I was supposed to. And as soon as I, I changed my mindset from not being afraid to fail, but telling myself it's actually okay to fail, um, everything changed for me, right? And one of the biggest things that I think of now is um, whenever I'm, um, you know, whether it's dialing, texting, you know, or just connecting with people, I want to try to get as many no's as possible. And the reason why I want to get as many no's as possible is because that means I'm working and that means I'm talking to a lot of people, right? And I do know that inside the no's are going to be the yeses, right? And the only way to get to those yeses is to go through the no's, right? So the biggest thing I like to look at is uh, I like to compare it to sports a little bit, um, uh, a good example is, uh, is basketball, you know, these great NBA players that, uh, you know, make millions and millions of dollars for being the, the best at their sport, you know, they shoot 30%, you know, from, from the field, right. Which means 70% of the time they miss, right. So if they can suck, you know, 70% of the time and still be the best at it and still make millions of dollars, it's okay for us to suck 70% of the time and even more. You know, when you look at it and from the perspective of leads, you know, if, if we've got 200 leads, you know, that cost us $1,000, let's say, you know, we can actually suck 90% of the time and we're going to be really, really good, right? If we protected 10 families out of 200 opportunities, that's incredible, right? So instead of, you know, getting down about the 190 people that said no, or that we couldn't get a hold of or whatever, you know, we have to still work through those to get to those 10 that say yes, right? So that mindset is a big thing because you have to have the mindset knowing that, hey, it is okay before, or excuse me, it is okay to have all those people say no. Um, and then the last thing um, I would say is be coachable um, and be open-minded in the sense of even if you're, whether you uh, have any experience or whether you don't have any experience and you're coming over in, into this industry is be open and willing to listen to other people because it really is just copy and paste for the most part where if there's a, a certain amount of families you want to be protecting each week a certain amount you want to be protecting each month and a certain way that you want to do it whether it be in the field, Zoom, or over the phone, find someone who are do, who's doing that and doing the numbers you want to be doing and ask, hey, how are you doing that? Because I promise you, if you just reach out and ask, it might not be right away, but they will. someone will get back to you and they'll let you know, hey, this is what I'm doing, right? And there's nothing special between myself, yourself, and, and you know, all these other top producers, right? The main thing is they just work harder than other people, right? And they copied and pasted from someone else, right? So if we can just take exactly what they're doing and emulate it ourselves, 
we'll be fine, right? Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Right. And so, and they didn't give up either. You know, I think that's a key one is like, like you said, I think it's, if you, if you acknowledge, if you acknowledge everybody's story, that's being successful, none of them came out the gate and were just awesome. No. Right. It's just, I mean, my, my first in my fourth, excuse me, in my, yeah, in my fourth month in with FFL, I issue paid $0. I had negative, that was the, the month right before convention of last year. Um, I helped zero family, excuse me. And um, when I went to convention, um, I, I was broke. I, I had bills that needed to be paid, but I still figured out a way to go um, because I didn't want to give up, right? And lo and behold, you know, everything there is kind of what, what changed for me and kind of helped me develop that mindset and figure out what I needed to, you know, do for my copy and paste. So, you know, if, if it takes four months, it takes four months, you know, it, it takes a lot of people years and years and years in one job to actually get to where they want to be going. So if, if it takes you four months to get there, I mean, come on that's that's nothing right now this is the thing too and i think it's a good point that you guys need to realize this isn't a job it's it's a business you guys are business owners and most businesses have to put in hundreds of thousands of dollars to start and they don't return a profit until three to four years so four months and then you're like oh this isn't working out it's like most people don't take as four four months but if it did you're still going to find your profit i mean the fraction of the amount of money we spend on a on a lead right versus the amount we can make on a family we protect is crazy and so it's very easy to make our money back and i think that you know it, it's it's it is a rough start right with any business i don't care if you want to start a shoe store you want to start a plumbing business you want to start a restaurant it's going to be a rough start you know that's how entrepreneurship works but everybody that's wealthy in the country 95 percent of them are entrepreneurs you know, and you have to go through struggle to level up, right? And I think that the amount of struggle you have to go through in this business compared to other businesses is unmatched. I think this is the easiest path. I think to just most people quit too early and they don't they don't have enough self-discipline. Would you agree with that? I, I definitely agree with that. And it's also, you know, expectations, you know, too, is if you have the expectation of, of, coming in and in your first month you're you're going to protect 40 families in your first month you need to change those expectations um, and the thing is is it's okay to not do that in your first month right um, your first 30 days whether you're in the business or not really needs to be your your learning process right um, you know if, if you only protect five families and you know, you're still able to, to, you know, have a roof over your head and do what you need to do. That's, that's awesome. You just got to keep going. Right. So for the people that expect to be able to protect 10 families a week in their first week, it's, it's time for some readjustment. Right. Now, I'm not saying that it can't happen because, you know, we, we've definitely seen it happen before, but the expectations shouldn't be that that is what's going to happen as well as, you know, it's, let me take a step. So it's kind of like, if you don't do the work either, it, it's not going to happen too, right? And so a lot of people expect that you can come in, do just a little bit of amount of work, and you're still going to end up protecting 10 families a week, right? So what they don't realize is all the hard work you know, all the dials, all the, the time spent, all the videos watched that comes into actually protecting 10 families a week. And they think, okay, I can just at a drop of a hat, help 10 families. So there's a lot that goes into it. And I think, I think too, you know, is, is, is a major mistake I see two people make is either they, they a study and they never actually work, which is working is actually dialing the phone. Right. Mm -hmm. Or, or they just dial the phone and don't watch any videos and study, or when they're studying, they don't watch it with intent. You know, they watch a video once, they don't take notes, they're listening to the gym, they're watching TV or cleaning the house. It's not really like absorbing it. You know, the guys like, you know, like Daniel that, 
that that made it finally like he's going to convention he's watching videos three or four times he's taking notes he's repeating outside practicing himself recording himself seeing how he sounds so his managers doing role play taking advantage of anything that in copying repeating that his mentor says on that copy repeat note guys i don't i don't think it's proper for you guys when you're brand new to take a little bit of pieces of each person and put it together to make your own thing Find your mentor and copy and repeat exactly from start to finish, which we're about to hear Kirby's, you know, Daniel Kirby's start to finish and copy that. But what we mean is there's a lot of people out there that are successful, copy them, but do not reinvent the wheel because you guys don't have the money or the time to waste on something that you don't know works. You know, use, you can try that out later once you make a lot of money and then fall back onto what you know, but copy and repeat and find a mentor and just copy that exactly because you know, the stuff and reason why we have these videos like Daniel's on here today or like I've gone, got, gave mine out. And there are millions of other people that not millions, I guess, but probably thousands of other managers that put it out there. They're, t they're laying out the, the groundwork from start to finish exactly what they say, exactly what they're doing. And all you have to do is copy and repeat. So let, on that note, I want to say thank you again for joining us. And it's such a pleasure. I mean, I definitely look up to you. I uh, learned a lot from you. So just excited getting this meat and potatoes on this copy repeat stuff. And this is the role play call. So instead of us talking about, you know, concepts, I want them to kind of hear, you know, if, if I was a client, you know, what you're doing. So I know you've done remote, you've done face to face. Which one do you like better? Uh, I mean, honestly, either or, um, you know, I've I've personally lately at least liked uh like staying remote um simply for the fact that i am i i have a bigger variety of leads that i can get right so because i'm not you know trying to stick in one place you know i'm, I'm licensed in 25 different states right so i can get leads in any of those states right so i don't have to worry about getting into the CRM, clicking on my county and saying, no, there's not that many leads in this county today. Well, I'm, what am I, I'm, I'll just wait till tomorrow, right? I don't have that problem. Um, so, you know, kind of staying remote has been, has been great. However, um, for looking as a, as a new agent, um, I can say I, I recommend um, doing some sort of field work at the beginning, um, just because that's where I personally learned the most right now. I'm not saying, you know, it can't be done immediately from the phone. Like I, I definitely think that it's very, very possible. It's just going to be a little bit, a little bit harder and a little bit more, uh, complicated if you don't have any kind of knowledge of the business. Um, because, you know, it took me six, seven months of getting my butt kicked in the field before I was, you know, confident enough to be able to say, okay, well, I can take exactly what I'm doing in the field and do it on the phone. And it is a little bit different beast. Um, I think most people are kind of on this call for remote. So let's, let's focus on that a little bit today. Absolutely. So what are you doing? You know, there's obviously two parts, right? One is either, you know, setting up the appointment or do one call close. And then, and then the second part's our presentation. Let's start with uh, how you're setting appointments now and what you're doing and share it with the team. And if I need to pull up that uh, tech script, we can as well. Absolutely. So, um, Right now, I've actually been been texting all my leads, as as you could say. So, um, what what I do is uh, I I text fifty initial leads every single day, Monday through Saturday. I don't on Sunday; I take Sunday off. But Monday through Saturday in the morning, the first thing I do um, is I go into the CRM and I buy fifty leads, um, whether it be. Um, aged final expense, like one month, two month, three month final expense, one month, two month, three month mortgage protection, internet leads, whatever it is, I buy 50. I try to stick with as many direct mail as possible um, for the, the simple fact that, uh, you know, you're, you're able to send a picture, um, but I do supplement with a lot of internet leads as well. So I send my 50 initial texts in the morning, okay? Then in the afternoon, what I'm doing is I'm following up 
sending a follow-up text to the people I texted the day before that didn't respond. So let's say um, Thursday, today, for example, right? So this morning, you know, went into the CRM and I got my, my 50 leads. Um, and then I, you know, sent my initial text to all 50 leads. Then this afternoon, what I've been doing this afternoon is I've been sending my follow-up text to all of the leads from yesterday that hadn't responded. Okay, then after that, I'm now sending my second follow-up for Tuesday, right? So Tuesday, I had my initial text, and then Tuesday, I had my second follow-up. So then, as you can see, my, my second text right here is Ryan saying, that's what I send the next day. Third text. So if it's Thursday, that third text is what I'm sending to uh, my, uh, my Tuesday people. And then my fourth text is what I'm sending to my Monday people, right? So I'm giving myself four different, four different times. And I kind of, I try to mix it up as much as possible in the sense of like, if my first follow-up was sent at, at 2 p.m., maybe my second one's going to be at, at 5 or 6 p.m., right? Or and maybe my third one might be a little bit earlier, maybe around uh, 11, 30, 12, right? Because typically, uh, I've timed it multiple times um, because all of my texting is done manually. I don't use a, a, a phone burner. I don't use any kind of texting app. Uh, I literally do everything manually. I take a picture. I copy and paste my message, I put in the phone number, I hit send, right? But even by doing that, I can send those 50 initial texts in an hour. So one hour every morning, 8 to 9 a.m., I'm sending my initial texts, which still gives me plenty of time to run my appointments through the days, to also follow up with people, right? Because, you know, throughout the day, people text me back and, you know, there's simple objections here that we have to go through, right? Right. And the nice part about texting is all the objections are the same, right? You know, whether you're, you're on talking with them on the phone or, or you're texting, you know, the objections are always the same, right? I already got this taken care of. Uh, I'm no longer interested. Uh, I can't do it today. Uh, I want you to send it to me, right? Everything's the same. Um, and a lot of new agents sometimes mess up on objections because they're, they're not, um, they, they just haven't really got to that point where they, they've mastered how to overcome them, right? Um, and so this kind of gives you, A, the ability to take a couple of minutes and, you know, read the text and go figure out what you need to say to that objection, right? And then after that objection, um, or excuse me, after, you know, you've sent those so many times, you've now learned what to say when that objection comes up. So now once you, you know, start mixing in dialing, different things like that, um, you are able to know what to say, right? So if even for appointments, right, once you're running your appointments, again, it's all the same objections, right? They tell you, well, you know what, I'm actually not interested anymore. Or, um, you know, actually, I think I did end up getting this taken care of and it's just not for me right now. So it's still all the same. So that's that's more or less kind of what what I do for appointments now after that fourth text message um if there's days that I I don't necessarily have as many appointments as I'd like um what I will do is um I will occasionally have my live transfers turned on um so kind of in between the day you know I give myself the opportunity to have a live transfer come in um as well as I will dial through some of my um, leads that hadn't gotten that fourth text or hadn't responded to that fourth text. Um, Let me pause you for one second. Um, guys, I see a lot of the questions coming up. We're going to do a Q&A after he's done giving us the role play, okay? So we'll get to all you guys. As far as his uh, script, he'll keep updating us on some more rebuttals. It's on FFLrush.com, and you just go to training and go to scripts. It's right there. So that's where it's at. Um, the question I have for you real quick, Danny, as you continue, so we're sending 50 that day, obviously 50. How much are you spending on leads in a week? So it ranges anywhere between, I'd say, about 22 to 2300 to as much as sometimes 3000 Okay. 
and we're protecting, like you said, we're protecting an average of how many families per week would that? Would I mean, spend? typically 15, 16, 17 on average every single week, if not there more. You go, guys. So, you know, the more we spend, the more opportunities we have. It's all numbers game, right? And so, I mean, if we're adding that up, it's 50 times times six, and we're looking at 300, 300 leads that we're purchasing per week, right? And then basically you have your batch of 50, your new batch of 50, and you're kind of going day by day with the first text, second text, third and fourth, correct? Exactly, exactly. And then after the fourth text, no response. So we get, we're, we're throwing that lead away. Um, I'll, I'll dial them. Um, or, um, you know, I'll kind of, if I don't dial them right away, I, I keep them kind of organized in that sense. So after each week, um, I organize my leads and put them kind of in a pile of all the ones that didn't respond. And, you know, I might not get to them right away, but maybe a month later, hey, I'll shoot them another text, right? Um, I'll, at that point, give them a call, right? Because there's, I, I never want to leave something unturned. Um, now, of course, you know, by doing things virtually, it does take away the ability to door knock, especially if you're doing things out of state. Um, but another thing is, you know, hey, if if you've got someone that you know that you're working with, hey, give them an opportunity, right? So a lot of times I'll I'll share some of the leads that I hadn't gotten responses from with, with some of my newer agents. They'll do the exact same text and they'll get a response and set an appointment and <laughs> you know, help a family, right? So, you know, it's kind of just spreading the love there, right? But I, I have found that with text messages, um, I'd say about about 90% of the time I get some sort of response um, wow. from, from that. So there's, there's really not that many left unturned at that point. Um, however, or excuse me, not however, but at the same time, because of the way that my system is set up, I don't really necessarily have to worry too much about the ones that haven't been un unturned because I know, well, tomorrow I'm getting more leads. Well, tomorrow I'm getting more leads. Well, tomorrow I'm getting more leads tomorrow, right? So because there's endless amounts of, of leads in the CRM, I know that I will never run out right? There will never be an opportunity where I can't find somebody to reach out to. I love Except it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So now, so we have our appointment set. Um, you know, they pick a time it's set. You guys, again, you can look at the script, fflrush.com, go to training, go to scripts. And, and I'm, I'm sure if you guys have some rebuttals, let me know. And I can ask Kirby and, and I'll add those to the, uh, to the script as we go. So just know we'll keep updating it, making it better. Um, so thank you so much. That's amazing. What? <laughs> give some thumbs up or throw some fire emojis down in the comments if you like what Kirby's dropping as far as his test. This is awesome. Um, so then we got the appointment set. Let's get let's do some role play. I'll be the client. And uh, you know what? What age do you want me to be? What's your typical age that you're dealing with? Um. I mean, if, if, if I'm doing mortgage protection, let's say it's, you know, anywhere between average age, you know, 30 to 50. Um, so if we'll say, you know, you're, you're a 40 year old. Okay. That. So I'm 40 years old, which actually I'm 40. So it works out perfect. I don't know. I myself. All right. Do you want to be married? Do you have couples normally, or do you, do you have singles? Um, it's, it's kind of goes either way. If, if they're married, I do make sure that I am on the phone with both of them. Obviously, um, that is something that I do run into a lot where if I, I'm setting an appointment through text, I make my phone calls. Sometimes the spouse isn't there. I do not continue with the appointment. I ask them, like I, whoever, I'm, whether it's the husband or the wife that I'm speaking with when I make that phone call, um, you know, I'll, I ask, okay, hey, is, you know, your husband going to be joining us? Oh, no, he's, he's at work right now. Oh, okay, not a problem. Well, what's a good time that your husband's going to be home from work and you guys will be home together? And I just, I straight reschedule it because there's no point of, of running a one-legged appointment because no matter what and no matter what you say, they're always, if they're not 100% into it, you know, they're always going to say, well, I need to talk to my husband. Or I need to talk and, to my wife. And if you do close it, guys, you're now leaving it up to that spouse 
to, 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 to do your job and tell why it's important. So your, your chargeback percentage goes through the roof too. So yeah, I know it sucks, but always reschedule if you get your one luggers. All right, so, so we'll play. play we're gonna play the. We're gonna play that. I'm. I. I'm a. You know, forty year old. Uh, and then you know, I answer the phone, and I'm gonna play off like you know, oh, you can just give me the information, but I do have a wife that I'm. A, you're gonna make me. You know, get her on the phone. Okay. All right. Perfect. So first thing I do. Yeah. First thing I do is you know. Hey, Ryan, Daniel, is so this we're still- just, We're just going to role play it. So don't break character. We're going to go from all the way from start to finish cool. and uh, give an idea of flows, all right? So awesome. ring, ring, hello. Hey, uh, this is Daniel Kirby. Is this still a good time for you? Oh, yeah. What was it about again? So this is just for us to, to go through that information um, about the mortgage protection. It's the, the plans that were designed to take care of your mortgage, you know, in the event of any kind of, sickness disability you have a heart attack you have a stroke get cancer you get hit by a car and can't walk anymore can't work anymore of course death and, and that's what you were looking for right uh, yeah yeah we were just looking i was just looking in some information on it perfect awesome that's actually my exact job now ryan um there are qualifications for it okay the qualifications are going to be based off of something called an mib report which just stands for medical information bureau and also just to make sure you know that you haven't escaped from prison and you're hiding out there in Park City, Utah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Ryan, now the way that these plans work is they are tied to the individual. They are not tied to the mortgage itself, okay? So that being said, if we were wanting to look at something that covered both you and your wife, we would be looking at two individual plans, okay? So because they are individual, would you say it would make the most sense to look at something just for you, just for your wife or for both of y'all? Uh, probably both of us. We're both bringing both. income for the house. Perfect, perfect. You, and now, are you, now and you're just gonna here, give me the information. Remember, she's out in the kitchen somewhere. You want me to get her? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So um, that was going to be my next question, Ryan. Is uh, is your wife uh, is your wife home with you right now? She's, she's making dinner right now. Is it is okay if you just give me the information I relay that to her? Absolutely. I'd love to be able to do that. I do find that it is best um, for for myself to kind of go through it, especially if both of you guys are looking at information, uh, just because I don't want there to be any kind of, you know, miscommunication if I go through it with you and, you know, you're not sure how to really go through it with her. So go ahead, grab her. Um, if this is a good time, if not, I can definitely give you guys a call back later this evening after dinner. Um, yeah, um, let me go grab her. I think she just put something in the oven that takes a while to cook. Okay, she's here. Perfect. Hi, Mrs. Reynolds. How are you? Uh, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, Hi. perfect. Now, um, as I was telling your husband, um, we're going to be kind of just going through the information um, about the mortgage protection plans together. You know, I made sure that um, this is what you guys were, were looking to get was the info for this. Um, I did tell him that there are qualifications for it that we do have to go through. So what I'm going to be doing, I'll start with you, Ryan, is um, we're going to go through some basic questions so I can kind of get a good idea of which carriers in Utah are going to give us our best chance of getting approved. Um, once we know that, we'll be able to kind of go through the different benefit options, pricings, all that kind of good stuff that everybody wants to know in the first place. Um, and after we go through that, we'll be able to see if we can get fully approved, depending on which one, you know, is going to make the most financial sense for us, because there's no point for us to look at something that we can't even get, right? I guess that makes sense, yeah. Perfect, perfect. So um, first thing, Ryan, um, what is your birthday? Blah, blah, blah. Perfect. And um, Mrs. Ryan, what is your birthday? Blah, blah, blah. Perfect. All right. So Ryan, um, tell me, are you a smoker or non-smoker? Non-smoker. All right. Great. Have you ever had a heart attack or stroke? Never. Beautiful. Any kind of kidney disease, liver disease, or heart disease? Not that I know of yet. Beautiful. Diabetes? Uh, diabetes, yes. Okay, perfect. Now, since you are 40 years old, um, are you taking meds or just or insulin? What are you doing? Uh, just, just metformin. Just metformin. Okay. And were you diagnosed before or after the age of 35? 
uh, after. Okay. And was it within the past four months that you were diagnosed? Uh, no, it was two years ago. Okay, perfect. And do you have any kind of diabetic complications, retinopathy, neuropathy, anything like that? No. Cool. Still got all your fingers and toes, arms and legs? Still got them all. Awesome. All right. And then uh, any high blood pressure? Uh, yes. Okay. Controlled with medication? Uh, we'll do, yeah, one one pill right now. Just one pill right now? Okay, great. And were you diagnosed with that before or after the age of 30? Um, that was, uh, a, yeah, about four years ago. So, yeah, okay. after 30. After 30. Okay, awesome. All right. And then any major asthma COPD? Um, yes, I have asthma. Asthma. Okay. Would you consider that asthma to be chronic or just kind of like seasonal? Uh, it's seasonal based on like allergies. Seasonal. Do you take any oral steroids? Uh, no. Very good. All right. And have you been hospitalized at all in the last 12 months? Uh, for, for in, in general or? Just, yeah, have you been hospitalized at all in the last 12 months? Uh, no. All right, good. Tested positive for COVID? Um, let's say yes. All right. How long ago were you tested? Uh, three months ago. Three months. Okay. And it was, it was a positive three months ago? Yeah. All right, perfect. Okay. And then uh, lastly, any criminal history in the last 10 years? Uh, nope. No criminal history. Perfect. All right. And then so other than uh, that one medication you take for your high blood pressure, um, the metformin, and uh, I know you said you had an, an inhaler um, for your asthma. Are there any other uh, medications that you are prescribed. I don't care about vitamins. I don't care about over-the-counter stuff, allergies, cholesterol, heartburn. Uh, nope, that's it. That's it. All right, perfect. All right. Now, um, Mrs. Ryan, since uh, you were listening in on that, correct? You heard all the questions I asked your husband? Uh, yes, I did. Perfect. So what would you answer yes to? Uh, what should, I, what should she be? Uh, let's do... Yeah, just the cholesterol med, that's it. Just cholesterol med, perfect. All right, so before I go into my system here, guys, I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of education with y'all, all right? So with traditional mortgage protection, um, there's essentially three main types, okay? Our first one is gonna be something called a payment protector, all right? And what a payment protector is, is it's a decreasing benefit. So for example, now Ryan, remind me, your mortgage is 200,000, right? That's right, yeah. And is it a 15 year, 20 year, 30 year term? It's 30 years. 30 years, you planning on paying it off early? Uh, I haven't thought about it yet. Maybe down the road if you know if the bills aren't as tight. Gotcha, but you're not putting anything extra towards the principal right now? Uh, not right now. Okay. So for the example for that first time, Ryan, um, our payment protector, if we set it up for that 200,000 at 30 years, the 200,000 will decrease on a straight line over the course of the 30 years. So it'll kind of follow the mortgage in a way. Does that make sense? Yeah. What's the name of that product? So that's what's called a payment protector. That's our first option. Okay. Which carries it through? I'm sorry. What's, what's the carrier? So if we end up looking at the one that has this specific one, it's going to be a carrier called Americo. Now, um, I'm not specific if, uh, if you, Ryan, will be able to qualify for that one, uh, but I do want to just make sure first I go through all the different options with you guys, okay? So I'm going to get back okay. to doing some education. Awesome. So the second type is going to be a level plan, all right? And what a level plan means is the face amount will stay the exact same for the entire time period. So same example, 200,000 for 30 years, instead of the face amount decreasing, that 200,000 is going to stay at 200,000 for the entire 30 years. Now, obviously our mortgage is going to be going down, right? So let's say for example, in 15 years, you've got a hundred thousand left on your mortgage and you know, God forbid something happens and you need to accelerate your benefit. You'll be able to pay off what's left of your mortgage, that hundred thousand. And then you'll have $100,000 left over. You can use for income replacement, hospital bills, whatever you need to use it for. Does that make sense? That makes sense. 
Perfect. All right. Now our last one is also a level plan. So same as the second one. However, this one has something called ROP attached to it. Okay. So what that stands for is return of premium. All right. So this one kind of works like a, like a piggy bank in a way. So at the end of the policy, so same example, 200,000, 30 years, let's say that, you know, nothing's happened to you. You haven't gotten sick, haven't gotten, you know, haven't become disabled, um, haven't passed away. You're actually going to receive every single penny that you spent back. Right. Um, so in the sense of a piggy bank, just imagine every month you're putting money into your piggy bank. All right. If something happens, there's a value for your piggy bank if you sell it, all right? The piggy bank's gonna be worth $200,000, right? Now, if nothing happens at the end, you get to break open your piggy bank. Does that make sense? It's making sense, yeah. All right, perfect. So do you feel like you understand the, the difference between the three? Yeah, one's kind of falling the loan balance down, one stays even, one's kind of like I have a magical piggy bank. Anytime something happens, it break it open. It's worth 200,000. If nothing happens, break it up at the end, I get all my money back. Correct. Awesome. Good stuff. So based off, off uh, the descriptions, is there one or two of them that are kind of making a little bit more sense for you guys for what you want to look at? Well, I mean, obviously getting the money back sounds like the, the best route to go. Is there, a, is there a cost difference amongst these or? So yeah, there definitely is a cost difference, um, you know, and that's something that that we'll look through because the only policy that's even going to matter, Ryan, is the one that actually stays in place, um, and which means it has to be comfortable, right? Because we don't want to be paying on a policy for two, three years, and then all of a sudden you have to cancel it, right? Makes sense, yeah. Perfect. So what I want to do first is um, for you, Ryan, since we'll start with you, um, I'm going to go through my system and kind of look at a couple of different ones and figure out which one's going to give us our best chance of getting approved. Uh, and then we'll go through some numbers for you. All right, Ryan. Sounds fair. All right. So Ryan, uh, go through my system because of your COVID in the last three months, I know that I'm going to be doing mutual of Omaha. The reason. Oh, we, we lost you there for a second. Can you guys hear him? Uh, I don't hear you. I don't hear you. Let's see if we can get you back here. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, uh, I got you back. All right, we're good. All right, we're good. All right. Um, all right, Ryan. So after uh, after looking through the system, uh, the company that's going to give us our best chance of getting approved, as well as our best prices, is going to be a company called Mutual of Omaha. Have you heard of them? Uh, yeah, yeah. They used to have that animal show on TV. Yeah, yeah. Wild Kingdom. <laughs> All right. So um, what I want to start with, since you are, um, since you do want to look at um, the cash back option um, with them, they have a 30 year cash back option. So once we live to 70, we haven't, uh, you know, passed away or needed to accelerate our benefit. Um, then we get that check back. Okay. Okay. Now, what I want to do, because like I said, the only policy that actually even matters is the one that stays in place. We're going to look at a few different uh, face amounts, all right? So I want to start with the full mortgage, with three quarters of the mortgage, and with half the mortgage, all right? So we can kind of get a good idea of price range, then we can play around with it from there if we need to. Does that sound good? Sounds good. All right, perfect. So do, do, do. All right, so let's say... Uh, all right, so um, Ryan, so pulling up uh, the three different options there. Uh, if we looked at doing the 200,000, we'd be at 200 a month, 150 would be at 150, and then 100,000 would be at $100 a month. Did you get those numbers, Ryan? I, I got them written down, yeah. Perfect, all right. So looking at those, is there anything that you want me to kind of look at in between that? Anything more, anything less? Or would you say that's kind of like a good starting point? I think that's a good starting point. All right, perfect, perfect. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll figure out, um, you know, if we can get fully approved for this. So based off of uh, getting our approval done here, um, is there one of those that looks a little bit more comfortable for you than another? 
I think we could probably do the full mortgage. Full mortgage. All right, perfect. All right, and so at that point, uh, just go through go through the app, start asking questions, get it all set up with mutual. Um, so we're going end. through the app, we're filling it out. Um, yeah, so what do you mean? Why do you have to give my banking account information for this? <laughs> gotcha. So yeah, definitely a good question. Now, um, let me let me actually take a step back, Ryan, because there's a way that I kind of I kind of go through this. So um, the way that I ask for banking information is a little bit different. So what I do is when I get to when I get to the banking information part, the first thing I ask is I say, okay, Ryan, um, if we do get fully approved, um, what is there a certain day? of the month that you would want uh, your premium payments to be? Um, yeah, I, I guess probably like the 15th, just because we have all our bills happen on the first. The 15th of the month, perfect, perfect. All right, and then what is the name of the, the bank that you'd want to use? Um, probably Chase. Chase, all right, perfect. All right, so Ryan, do me a favor. Let me know if this is correct. So for Chase, I have the routing number as 111-000-614. Is that right? Uh, let me go check. Let me go to my checkbook and check it. Perfect. Now, you, are you also asking, obviously, the state and then Googling it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot that. Well, yeah. I, I'm assuming since Utah, I usually at that point, I'll say, okay, did you open this account? Did you open up you know, Chase in Utah? And, and then what I do is I Google it there, right? So by doing that... Either A, you know, they they say yes, you know, that is correct, which means if they know their routing number, they automatically know their account number. Right. right. And then or they also ask if that's right. You are now going to go check your checkbook, which means you have your checkbook in front of you, which means you have your account in front of you. Right. So at that point, there's it's kind of like nonchalant. So there's never really a situation where I've it's very, very rare that when you kind of go through it with that sense of it, showing them that you already know their routing. We've already talked about which day of the month we'd want it to be. You know, typically there's no pushback for, for account. Now, if there is, you know, I'll say, okay, perfect. Um, you know, I, I definitely understand that, you know, you'd, you'd like to wonder why we have to have the account information to go through our full approval. Uh, it's, typically just to make sure that, you know, there's no um, fraud going on, just to make sure that, you know, you haven't had any kind of check frauds, tax fraud, and, you know, that you are actually, you know, getting insurance for yourself and you're not trying to get it in anybody else's name. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And then do you have any pushback on social? I mean, Pete, someone just asked on the group chat, I'd really never have any pushback on social, but uh, have you yeah, for that? social, um, I always, whatever app I'm going through, I leave that as the last piece of information before I get to my next page. So obviously to get to the next page, you know, you have to have the social, but a lot of the apps, there's a lot of other information you can actually ask before getting to the app, right? So by going through all the other information, that's where you've started to build your credibility, right? Um, and then not only that, but from my, from kind of what I've gathered and what I've learned from, from doing phone presentations and different things, then the number one reason that people either don't give you your social, don't give you your bank account number, or tell you that they want to think about it is because they don't actually know what they're getting, right? So if they don't know what they're getting, why would they give you the information? If they do know what they're getting, they'll be happy to give you the information. So that's why I spent a good amount of time educating you about the different types of what there is and figuring out, okay, what do we want to try to get? And what's um, more comfortable budget wise too? give them exactly a lot. Right. So, you know, that education for me is actually the credibility. So mm -hmm. a lot of people, you know, they, they give people their license number, they send the picture of their drive. I don't do any of that um, right. because you want to educate them on what they're getting. Right. And if you don't educate them on what they're getting, they're not going to get it. 
right? There, there's no reason for them to. So education is really, really, really big for phone sales. Um, specifically for the fact that, you know, if you have to, especially for from like a new agent side of things, that's why I also say it's kind of hard, uh, a little bit harder to do phone sales as a new agent is because you don't necessarily have all of that product information yet. You don't have those underwriting skills. Um, you don't necessarily, um, you haven't gone through enough repetitions yet, right? So you don't want to have to be putting them on hold. Now, let's say you are a new agent, all right? Whenever you get to a point, like typically when you're in the field, you know, we say, hey, we're going to give our product specialist a call, right? So instead of saying that on the phone, if you do need help and you do need to call someone or you need to take a minute to go into Slack to, to do whatever, say, hey, I'm going to put you on a quick hold so I can go through my system to make sure I'm looking at the best possible options. Right. So that. That they yeah. don't that you're calling somebody else. And I'll so give you guys say, some quick tips too, guys. Um, you know, on the note of the social or bank account. If, if we're if we're making it in our heads like it's a big deal, then it's a big deal. So you know, it's just like, hey, what's your address? Okay, what's your social? As soon as they give it to you, you're moving on quickly. Okay, you know, what's your birthday? You just it's just you know knocking them out right away. Also, you know, if you don't want to give three products, pick one that you guys like, know it, and then repeat it. You know, three times to the client so they understand it. You can start with just one option and keep it simple too on the phone as well. So there's a lot of different ways to do it, but if you, you know, pick one, you know, and become a master at it, like learn this, the cash back CBO 100, read the agent guide and just master that. And that's all you have to give. And then all you gotta do is, is reduce that same product down. And it's just one product, you know, like the back of your hand and that can work as well. Okay. So we don't have to make it. Um, I, I feel like, you know, phone sales. I think that's great. You're giving all the options and stuff like that too. And I've tried it both ways and it, it works, but you can also try keeping it really simple and just knowing one product and just giving them like a 200,000 cash back and a hundred thousand cash back, you know? So it, it's, it, you don't have to make it, you know, overcomplicated. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. I definitely think a big part of it too, is knowing your audience. Um, you know, understanding budgets, you know, looking at mortgage amount, you know, if someone's got a $115,000 mortgage, there's a reason their mortgage is only 115,000 and not 200, 250, 300 plus, right? Right. Uh, also figuring out their monthly mortgage payment is a good thing too. That's something that um, I didn't really go through. Now, let's say um, to kind of uh, take a step back, let's say that we went through um, let's say you're you're 50, you know, or older, and we went through, uh, you know, the health stuff, and I don't think you can call, let's say you had a heart attack, right? Um, so that's where understanding equity protection um, can be very important. So what well, all it is, is it's a, it's a whole life product, right? We, we know that we have to pivot to a whole life. So for at this point, it's like, okay, how do we best explain a whole life product that has a small face amount that can make sense to them, right? Because a lot of people might get put off knowing that it's a $10,000 policy, a $15,000 policy, right? So it's all in the way that you educate them about what they're getting and how really? you do Let's hear so, your role play on that. Let's say um, I'm 65. Obviously, I can't qualify for a term product or decreasing term. Um, give me the, the pitch on that so everyone can copy and repeat. Okay, perfect. So, um, Ryan, so uh, I can tell you up front um, that due to your heart attack, you won't be able to qualify for traditional mortgage protection. However, the good news is it does not mean you won't be able to qualify for anything, okay? So what we're going to be looking at is something called, that I like to call equity protection, okay? So a little to kind of go over a little bit about how it works. Now, first thing is, um, Ryan, what is your monthly mortgage? Uh, it is $1,459. 
All right, so we'll round it out. We'll call it 1450. Does that sound about right? Sounds fair. Perfect. All right, now let me ask, um, if, if something were to happen to you tomorrow, do you think that your wife would most likely sell the house and downsize? Or do you think that she would try to stay in the house that she that you guys are in? You know, it's hard to say. I mean, we just moved and that was a pain. So I don't know if we want to move again, you know? So well, so, uh, if, if what I mean is if you're not here. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, if she can stay, I mean, that's like kind of why we're getting the protection. But I guess it just kind of depends if she can stay or not. Gotcha. Okay. So would, depending on whether she can stay or not, be solely based on if the house is paid off or not? Um, yeah, I don't think she'd be able to afford to live here on her own income. So, I mean, if we could have that paid off, then, then yeah, that's okay. kind of the goal here, but. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So what we're going to look at is what a lot of people do in, in your situation, Ryan, um, when you can't, when they can't get qualified for a traditional mortgage protection is they, they look at that equity protection plan. Okay. So depending on what we, we kind of look through, what it's going to do is it's going to give your wife um, a certain amount of monthly mortgage payments to kind of a help her have enough grieving time, you know, help her, let her properly grieve, as well as give her enough time to get all her ducks in a row. So she can figure out a, whether she does need to sell the house and give her proper time to sell it and not lose the equity that you've built in the home and have to sell it for something that it's, you know, less than what it's worth because she can't afford that 1400 on her own. Or it, like I said, it's just going to give her that time to figure out what she needs to do in order to make sure she can stay, right? Because the last thing we want her to do is a week later, we don't want her to have to be scrambling, figure out, okay, how am I going to come up with $1,400 on my own, right? Right. Makes sense. Perfect. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to look at a few different options. Now, again, um, to kind of take a pause out, depending on what their budget is, age kind of depicts on which three options I, I show. Uh, but let's say, for example, what we're going to do, Ryan, is we're going to look at six months, 12 months, and 18 months worth of mortgage payments, okay? However, regardless of of that if you pass away from an accident we will make sure that your mortgage is still fully covered okay so how this will work is any type of natural cause will pay out that amount of monthly mortgage payments that we set it up for right but any accident will make sure it'll still pay off the entire home does that make sense it does make sense. Okay. So if I have an accident, the whole house is paid off. But if I die of a heart attack, cancer, stroke, something like that, it's just going to pick up the mortgage payments for six, 12 months or 18 months. Yeah. Depending on what we look at, that's just going to be our starting point. That's six, 12 and 18. Um, just to, like I said, give us kind of like a price range. And then, you know, we can play around with it from there to figure out which one's going to make the most financial sense for you. All right. Okay. Perfect. And so then, you know, I, I go through the application, right? I, I you know, if okay. it's- and, you know, In general rule of thumb, guys, I mean, 70 plus, you probably want to do the, you know, six, six, uh, six, 12, 18, 70 and below, you can get away with the 12, 18, 24. The price points are going to work out pretty okay. And their budgets are going to reflect based on, you know, their mortgage payment. Because obviously someone that's not as wealthy will have a smaller mortgage payment. So the premiums will be cheaper. Someone has a large mortgage you know, whatever. And he's adding on a mutual Obama accidental policy and adding it up as one plan. So he's selling two policies, one whole life final expense to cover equity plus a mutual Obama accidental. As long as they're 70 and below, then he can cover the whole house. And, and at your, I'm guessing you're adding both those premiums, premiums together to make it one plan. Yeah, exactly. For the accidental side. And the thing is, that's also, you know, if it comes down to, you know, a little, let's say, you know, it's a little out of their budget, you can either A, you know, half the accidental amount or B, just get rid of the accidental altogether. 
or you can at least just do the accidental, right? So, you know, if it comes down to, you know, man, I really can't afford more than $30, $40 a month right now. You know, we've got all these different things. Okay, perfect. So let's for now, at least go ahead and take care of, you know, your mortgage in the event of any kind of accident. And we can, you know, in the future, you know, budget changes, we can kind of reallocate and look at a couple different things. I love it. I love it. So a couple of quick questions. And I just seeing a comment here, you know, repetition builds confidence, right? So I did field work or face to face for 10 years. And when I went to telesales or just phone, it took me two weeks to do my repetition to feel confident with it just because I wasn't used to it, guys. So whether you want to start telesales or you want to start face to face, either way is going to be a struggle when you switch from one to the other. It's just about building that confidence and eventually it's going to come through repetition. Um, so let's jump into, you know, obviously, if you bought a, let's say, an instant life leader on the uh, CRM, are you doing like a certain age range, age range to do final expense versus life insurance or how's that work? Um, so for for that, what what I kind of do a little bit differently is um, I. Uh, instead of, you know, like at the beginning where I asked, you know, this is, you know, I said, these are about the plans, this, this, and that, that's what you were looking for. Right. So I'll say something along the lines of, um, Hey Ryan. Um, so just to reiterate, um, this is mainly for us to go through the information for, um, looking at a few different, uh, life insurance quotes and just information about different types of insurance. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Perfect. And then I, essentially treat everything the same um i let them know you know i basically well actually i take that back so it is actually different so i'll say okay perfect um so to let you know um not sure if i if i told you yet or not but um i don't actually work for any of the the insurance carriers i work with uh about 20 different uh carriers or more all right so what we're going to do today is something called the qualification process so we're going to first go through a pre-approval to figure out um, what kind of benefits we can get pre-approved for um, once we know what we are pre-approved for we will be able to look through the different options figure out what's going to make the most financial sense for us and then we'll be able to put in what's called a request of coverage um, to figure out if uh, we're able to get fully approved all right. So I'm going to start first by just going through some basic questions. All right. So I can kind of get a good idea of, you know, which direction we'll be able to go. So I yeah. go through, I go through the health questions. And then at that point, that's when I figure out a, their why, and then B I'll know what they can get. Right. So, you know, even if they're, they're 30 years old, sorry. Um, even if they're they're 30 years old and you know they're they're telling me you know they want burial right i i at least know which direction i can go right um or if they're um now let, let's say let's, they, they have, let's give um, an example of finding your why because i think that's obviously key you know for right, you so what i'll say is so i'll say so ryan um what is your main goal for your life insurance like what do you want your life insurance to accomplish main goal um shoot i, I mean i was just kind of looking into it you know I just, just to see the cost yeah how much does it cost <laughs> perfect so that's actually something we'll be able to go through um now to make sure i'm looking at the proper options because i do want to make sure that we are looking at something we can actually get. I want to make sure that I'm covering your goals first to figure out the proper direction to go. So would you say that you're you're wanting to cover your final expenses? Do you have any debts, any mortgages? Um, more, more or less, I guess, just leaving, you know, my wife some income if I pass away. Some income if you pass. So do you already have your final expenses taken care of? Uh, no, we haven't even thought about it. Yeah, because we're so young. What What is that? What's the final expense for? I'm sorry? What is final expense again? I haven't heard of this. So final expense is something that takes care of your final expenses. Um, so the in the event of, you know, your death, it'll make sure that there's no burden on your family. Um, so that way they don't have to come up with that extra money to take care of any kind of cremation or burial. 
Now, would you say that's something that is important to you, Ryan? Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess I never thought of it better than my family doing some car washes. Absolutely. So if we had to prioritize things, would we say that priority number one is making sure that there's no, no burden on your family if something happens to you tomorrow? No burden, number one, yeah. All right, perfect. And then if budget allows it, our second priority would be leaving some extra money. Is that right? That's correct. And then quick question, how do you sell a, a final expense policy to someone below the age of 45? I either do an IULE or I, uh, depending on if, you know, they're healthy to qualify or I do like, you know, uh, Aetna, you can go to 40 um, and American Amicable has family choice. Um, so you can do a whole life with, with American Amicable family choice. You can do a mutual of Omaha IULE. Um, so there is a few different options for that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. This is great. So what about if it's a age final expense lead? How are we treating that one different? Um, so it's very similar to kind of what we just went through. I think the most important thing with final expense is, um, what I actually just said, <clears throat> um, a little bit ago, which was prioritizing their goals. Um, because most people that want final expense also want to leave something extra, right? Um, you know, we all love to leave the world for our family, right? But deal when you're dealing with specifically final expense clients, a lot of them are on a fixed budget uh, or fixed income. You know, you deal with a lot of disability, you know, different things like that, right? So <clears throat> you have to be prepared to undersell in a way. And what I mean by that is um, when you prioritize things for them, you make it okay for them to, you know, have a smaller policy, right? Um, so what I mean by that is, you know, when I said, all right, so um, goal number one is to make sure that your, your family doesn't have a burden, right? And, you know, they say, right. And then I said, if budget allows it, that's a really big thing. So if budget allows it, you want to leave something extra, right? And, you know, they say, right. So that way, whenever I'm going through my options, um, let's say it's, it's, it's burial, right? Usually I show, you know, maybe 10, 20, 30 or, or 10, 15, 20, kind of, you know, feeling it out. So whenever you, you talk about the, if budget allows it, you kind of take away um, the objection of them saying, well, if it's not this much, then I don't want anything at all. Right. Well, you know, if they say, okay, well, you know, if I can't have 30,000, then I, I don't think I want to get anything. Well, um, Ryan, if, if, if I kind of go back to what we talked about earlier, you mentioned to me that your, your main priority was just making sure that um, there was no burden on your family. Right. And, you know, they, they re-agree with me. And then we did say that if budget allowed it, that we would like to leave something extra, right? Right, perfect. So right now with, with your budget that we have, we, we do know that we can at least take care of our final expenses, right? Right. You know? right. Perfect. So today, let's take care of goal number one. And then when, you know, if budget changes in the future, we can make sure we take care of goal number two, but let's at least take care of one of the goals so we don't leave here today without taking care of any of them. Love it, Daniel. Love it. Okay, guys. So uh, drop a drop a DK for Daniel Kirby in the comments. If you're loving what he's dropping here, go back and rewatch this probably like 20 times and just copy and repeat. The guy's uh, an animal. He's helping a lot of families. I want to go through a couple of questions here. Um, you know, uh, Dylan, you had a question, you guys. You can, there's a little button here, but you guys can raise your hand and I'll let you guys ask some questions uh, to Daniel. Um, actually, before we do the questions, Stu, let, let me ask you one real fast. Uh, what are some major rebuttals that you get and then you, the, the common ones you get and how do you overcome those? Um, in setting an appointment or during presentation? We'll do both. What's the most common right, text so, rebuttal? So the most common text rebuttal is uh, I'm not interested uh, or I'm no longer interested um, that or, you know, I already got it taken care of. Um, 
Frederick, yes, this will, uh, this is recorded and it'll eventually be sent out to you. Uh, I'm sorry, that just popped up on my screen, a little ADHD there. But um, anyway, so with the I'm not interested, the, the best way that I've found uh, to reply to that is um, I say, okay. Now, Ryan, I know that this was originally important to you, just like it is for every family that fills this out and mails it back. Are you no longer interested because you don't believe that you can afford it or because you don't believe that you're able to qualify? Right. Or actually, um, I say, do you um, do you not believe you're able to qualify or have you not found something that makes financial sense? Right. So Ryan's pulling up that that text right there. So if you scroll down to it, you'll see. Uh, it's not interested. Where is it? Are you getting taken care of? Here we go. So a lot of it's not interested. Right. Okay. I know this was originally important to you, just like it is for every family that sends back this request. Are you no longer interested because you couldn't find something that fits in your budget or you don't like, or you don't think that you will qualify for it. Right. So, um, you know, a lot of times that then is able to give me, you know, a really good answer. Right. So, um, you know, if they let me know that, uh, that price was the reason um if you go kind of down it's kind of mixed in but um if price is the reason you know okay perfect uh my job is to find something that protects you and your family while making sure to keep it in your budget um this should only take about 15 minutes to go over for tomorrow do you prefer this or this right being very straightforward if health is the reason um i can definitely see your concern you know you agree with them i definitely understand However, since I work directly with, I actually changed that if you want to change it, Ryan. So I work directly with the carriers. Um, so I'm able to look through the different options um, instead of different carriers, different options. We'll, we'll go uh, through and fix all this later. Yeah, and I heard, there's a quick tip, guys, too. In the iPhone, at least, I'm not sure in Android, but you can actually pre-put in all this stuff so you don't have to copy and paste. And you can do quick like HR and it automatically pastes it all in. So Google how to do that on the iPhone, I'm not sure Android, but you can actually set it up to where you just have to type in HR and it automatically puts it in or Q. So that's why I put all these in here because I put them all on my phone and I can just literally put an IM and that's initial text or IF, you know, initial mortgage protection, initial phone expense, initial internet lead. So it's kind of cool. So you can kind of look for shortcuts how to do that. Just Google how to do that, okay? Uh, what about when you're doing face-to-face? -face? What's the most common objections that you you get? I'm not sorry, when you're doing a presentation. So for presentation, um, I'd say the, the biggest one still at the end of the day is, you know, uh, I want to think about it or, um, you know, uh, I don't, I don't want to make any decisions today, right? Okay. So, you know, if, if they say, you know, after after I go through everything, you know, we, we get to the quotes, you know, and, you know, I say, all right, we're going to see if we can get fully approved. And they say, well, you know, honestly, I want to think about it. So perfect, Ryan. Um, I, I definitely understand. And one of the, the nice things uh, about the way this works is we first have to, you know, the insurance carriers after have actually have to think about it as well. And the good news is, is that even if you wanted to, the carriers do not allow any kind of upfront payment. However, if we do end up getting fully approved, um, you do actually have coverage immediately, which means during the time that you're gonna think about it, we will be at least covering our what ifs if you are approved. There is also what's called a 30 day free look period. And during those 30 free days, you're able to adjust your coverage up, adjust it down, change the term years or keep it exactly where it is without having to go through the entire process again. So what that means is, you know, it allows you to actually get your packet in the mail, review it with me, and we'll be able to make any kind of adjustments that we need to. So you do have that time. The carriers actually do that for a reason because they do know that people want to be able to think about it, sleep on it and look over, you know, all their options. Right. 
So first name is spelled R-Y-A-N, right? And then, you know, Go right back. that. I love it. Yeah. All right. So a couple quick questions here. So um, Dylan Burt, he's been doing, uh, trying for about three days now and he's not getting through. He says, hey, Daniel, how many leads did you buy before you got an appointment? My struggle right now is even setting up one appointment. I fully agree that it is definitely a numbers game and that you need to be consistent to be successful. I just want to know how long it took you to set any appointments. At least, I mean, personally, I'd say it took me at least 800 dials, 800 to 1,000 dials um, before I actually had an appointment set. And that was um, without the texting. That was all for the texting one or for the... Uh, oh, you mean for texting or just when I first got started? Oh, let's do both. Um, for, for when I first got started was about about 800 to to a thousand dials um texting was 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 pretty fairly quick um i i did do did see a lot of uh a lot of quick success as far as getting a lot of people to respond and, and getting a lot of uh responses back um simply because of how easy and and just straightforward the the initial that initial text message is you know it's it's very hey um this guy my job's to get you the information it takes this much time what time do you want me to call right so it kind of gives them it almost gives them like the sense that they have some control over it and, right. and keep in mind, guys, he's doing four texts, right? So one text the first day, second test the second day, third text the third day, fourth text. So he's not getting it right away in the first response. Sometimes he gets one on the fourth text, right? So you look at that script, it's first day, second, third, and fourth, and there's four texts going out to get a response. So don't just think on the first text and go, oh, this didn't work. I'm giving up. Sometimes it takes two, three or four. Right. And sometimes, too, you know, it takes them two or three days to respond. You know, um, before I started doing those follow ups and sometimes I'm not always, you know, if, if I've got a bunch of appointments, sometimes I, I forget to do my follow ups. You know, I'm, I'm not perfect with my structure either, but. Um, but that's actually still okay because, you know, a lot of times, like, uh, especially when I first started, I mean, I, I had people that I would text on a, on a Friday and I wouldn't send a follow-up text at all. And all of a sudden come, you know, Tuesday, Hey, Daniel, uh, I'm free today. And you're like, Oh, you look at when you texted them and it was five days ago. Right. So, you know, a lot of people too, just sometimes it takes time for them to text back as well. Um, so, you know, I, I don't really give up at all, uh, with any of them until they physically tell me no, or they tell me to stop texting them. Now, do you try to uh, call people first, like say three rings and then text or are you strictly doing text? Strictly text. Okay. And then, uh, well, another question is why do you choose, choose manual instead of phone burner? So the reason I do everything manually is because I'm sending an image. Um, with all of my messages for, for direct, if you're doing direct mail with, uh, with mortgage protection or with final expense, we have an image that they, you know, physically wrote something down. Um, so I send that image with the initial text message and you're not able to do that with phone burner because you can't just send out max text messages with different images, right? Um, as well as with internet leads, you know, if we go into our CRM for internet leads and you still hit, you know, mailer template, they're still going to give you something that you can take a picture of, you know, it's going to have their name and their street and their age. And, you know, it's going to say internet life lead or whatever, internet inquiry at the top. Right. So you can still send a picture of that. Right. Cause people like pictures, people like to see things, right. Even Facebook final expense comes with a PDF as well. And then he's talking about guys on the CRM when he's ordering age, final expense or age, mortgage protection. He's taking a picture of that actual mailer and sending it to the client, just to be clear. Uh, Julia, you're raising your hand. Let me get to you real quick. Julia, take yourself off mute. Thanks for joining us today. And hey, can you, re before we go, can you teach everybody else how to raise their hand if they have a question? How do they do that? Oh, just the reaction. And it says raise hand. All right, reaction. And then you can take it down. 
There you go. Once you guys, if you go to reaction, raise your hand once you're done, take it down. All right, perfect. Julia, what's your question? Okay, I have a question because um, I've just been, been been dialing. Now I have gotten a CRM and it has the texting and it sends out these texts. And I love that because people that have never picked up the phone have finally answered texts and they ask, hey, okay, you know, yeah, I'm interested. So I send them back a text and it's a generic thing of help and they want quotes, but I'm finding it hard because I keep trying to set up an appointment. Once I say, okay, I have some quotes. I want to set up a time. I even have the calendar thing, but then they don't want to go any further. I don't want to text you quotes because I can't explain just like you said, the benefit. How do I get them to want to hear so whenever somebody mentions to me like um i i just want to i just wanted to get quotes or i want you to send me the information or you can email it you can mail it basically giving me any reason to just send them something generic um typically my reply is somewhere along the lines of you know i'll say um, hey, Julia, you know, I would love um, to be able to go through that information with you. And that's actually what we're going to be going through together on our 10 to 15 minute call. Would you prefer for me, would you prefer me to give you a call either today at this time or this time or tomorrow at this time? Yeah, I've done that a couple of times, but then I don't know. You're doing it then. <laughs> yep, you're looking for your nose. You're looking. Hey, at your least nose. they're they're at least answering texts. They don't answer that phone, but they'll answer a text. So what would you say your percentage of the people that respond that you book appointments with is? Uh, oh, I'd say. Put yourself on mute, guys. I'm trying to go through numbers and do math. Oh, is that head. you? <laughs> that is me. I'd say it's probably uh, probably about. 40 to 50 percent okay so it's, he's not uh, booking with everybody but he's buying more leads here's another question how do you manage your leads since since you said you're doing everything manually not using phone burner so uh two different things one i have a, a i started like a, a google express spreadsheet thing um, that i've actually i keep every single tab for every single week um, that I, uh, that I set my appointments and I have a whole schedule and a whole big organized thing. I put in, you know, um, notes on each person's name with their mortgage information, whether I sell the policy or not, whether I, uh, you know, have to follow up with them, but first text, second test, third or fourth, you kind of follow up on that Google sheets as well. No, no, no. That's just for appointments set. So for, for leads that, um, I set, I actually print everything out. Um, and with that, uh, I usually just mark them on my printed out version. Now, if I, if sometimes I, I don't print them out, um, I just kind of keep, I have uh, in my phone, I have a fi files um, that I, uh, uh, that I save the ones, like if I'm just screenshotting it on my phone, if I get lazy or something, uh, and I keep all those files in there. And with people that, um, people that have already told me no, or that, you know, I, I, I delete that text message. Um, and then anybody that I've set an appointment with, uh, I might be setting an appointment with, I actually save their contact. Um, so I know that if it's like a saved name, I know that, hey, this is someone that's good to go. Um, and then I delete the ones that aren't, right? Okay. Um, and usually with that, I'm able to keep pretty good track, uh, mainly just because I print everything out. Like I said, that's pretty much the easiest way to do that. Um, because I'm able to actually just, you know, make notes on, you know, either the back of the page and I've got my stack for the week and then I go you, back. You got stacks per day. Like, this is my stack day one, stack day two, stack day three. And he's just going. Exactly. Through, okay? Exactly. 
So on a typical week, 300 a week, 50 daily with your texting system, how many respond after the first text, second text, third text, and so on? Uh, most of my responses do come from the first text. Um, I'd say of the people that respond, uh, I'd say at least 75% are getting back to me on the first text. And then um, from the second one, after I send a second text, I'd say of those second texts, I probably get about 50 people responding to those. Um, and then it's pretty much about the same. Usually it's about about half. Um, now, uh, most of from the fourth follow up text is when I get my most um, besides like my initial text is when I get my most responses, um, just because the way it's set up is like, hey, either tell me you want to do this or you don't. Right. And, you know, a lot of people will just say you don't. Right. Which is perfectly fine just because what that means is, okay, I know I can eliminate that person, right? I know that they're not actually interested in, in getting my help and I'm not gonna waste my time trying to convince somebody that doesn't want my help, right? There's so many people out there that do want my help. Let me focus on those. Let me, what, let me spend my time with those and not waste my time on the no's, right? It's okay to get no's, like we said, just because no's lead to yeses, um, but we still have to eventually get a response out of everyone, right? So with that last text message, um, the final one that I send, it's pretty much like, hey, do you wanna do this or do you not want to? You know, it's send me a yes or send me a stop, you know, and I'll get a lot of stops, right? But it's okay, right? And, you know, I do get some yeses out of it, but uh, I'd say the initial text and then the, the second follow-up is the, the most important one one uh, here's another good one here um which I, I don't think it really matters i'm sure you'll say that but what if your area code is different than those on the leads doesn't matter doesn't it matter. literally does not matter like it doesn't like the thing is is somebody if if they're gonna ant whether you're dialing whether you're texting you know no matter what you're doing if someone's gonna answer the phone they're gonna answer the phone if they're not they're not Right. And you just kind of leave it at that. Like, like people that start getting into, oh, my area code doesn't match up. This is not like that's really not the reason. It, they're just they're either going to answer the phone or they're not. It's it's really just what it is, you know, especially with our triple dial system. Like if I got a call three times in a row from the same number and I still didn't answer it, it's because I'm not going to answer the phone at all. Right. It doesn't matter if it comes up as 911, it comes up as mom or dad. If that number calls me three times in a row, I'm not answering. I haven't answered. It means I wasn't going to answer in the at first. Least, at least at that time. They might answer in the afternoon. At least at that time. Day. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's why, like with texting, it really doesn't matter, right? Because if someone's actually going to read your text, then they're going to respond, right? And, you know, that's why it is good to send follow-ups because, you know, I have had a lot of people that, you know, have texted back after a follow-up. Oh, hey, sorry, I didn't get back to you sooner. I'm free tomorrow at five, right? I think it's another one that doesn't matter, but have you ever tested texting full name versus first name? You know, I haven't. Okay. Uh, I have not. I usually always text first name. Um, now on some of them, when it's like hard to tell whose number is what, I actually don't use it. I won't use a name at all. I'll just say good morning. Um, and I've noticed that it, it, that really, it doesn't really seem to make a big difference whether you're, you know, using your name or, or just saying good morning. And guys, he's given us the keys. He's tested this stuff. He's typed stuff out. He's copying and pasting. Make sure you guys are not reinventing the wheel and changing any of the verbiage because this stuff has been tested by Kirby. Now he's sharing all that blood, sweat, and tears of trial and error with you guys. So remember not to reinvent the wheel to copy and repeat. Any follow, any additional questions? We got Yuri here. Yuri, go ahead and unmute. So Daniel, I did your system this week on two batches and I only got a 30% response, like 30 out of 100 people, none were. And you're, you're breaking up there, buddy. Except for one. Is that, uh, why is it breaking up? Can you not hear me? Hello? Yeah. I can't hear you. Why don't you type in your question, Yuri? But 
I, I heard 30%. It sounds about right, right? Where you should be at. Yeah. Hang I mean, on all the thing is, you know, not not every not every week, like I was talking about at the beginning of the call, uh, not every week is a great week, right? And it's okay to have bad weeks. It happens to me, right? Sometimes I only protect six or seven families, and sometimes I protect, you know, 25 to 30 families. Uh, but the thing is, is if you're only doing a hundred a week, that's a third than the amount that I've been getting, right? I've been getting 300 a week, right? So, you know, unless you, you're and you know, many, can, can I just 30. repeat myself? All right, go ahead. You're yeah. Yeah. No, my question wasn't like, no, I shouldn't be buying more. My question is like, is it, is, is it possible that whenever you buy a batch, you know, 50, that you'll only get a 30% response ratio and like none of them were positive. Only one person responded positively to actually set up a meeting. That was the question. Of course, of course it's possible. Right. So, so you want... just have to just keep buying more and more batches. And basically Absolutely. we don't, we don't know if that first hundred is going to be where they come from or the last hundred, but it's about looking at your data over a month. So when Kirby can look at his data over 300 to, he's got 1200 leads. He doesn't know if it's going to be that week or the next week or it come at the end, or it's going to be mixed and matched like half, 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 half. I mean, yeah. Um, there's been days where there's been days where I would, I would set 15 appointments off of 50 initial texts and there's days where I'd set two. And so right. it's, it's just what you do for the month guys, not what you do for the day. Right. And we don't know when that lucky streak is going to happen, whether it's, you know, beginning or the end, or it's a mix as we go. Count your month, not your days or your weeks. All right, let's go, Paul. What's your question, Paul? Hey, Kirby, got a question here. So when you have a lead card with two names, you know, husband and wife, are you texting them individually or are you sending them a group text together? I think Daniel might have froze up here. <laughs> uh, he's, he, he, I think he said he doesn't do any name. He just does good morning. So he's not sure which one that's going to be. Um, I think you can also put in a text of both their names. I think that's yeah. fine. So I think we might have lost Daniel. <laughs> okay. Uh -oh. um, I'll try to answer your question. Though. Uh, go ahead, Nairi. Why don't you ask a question? I'll see if I can answer it. I just said, um, I, I, I thought, I don't know if you, you said uh, what kind of leads you were using before. Um, can you kind of restate them? Because I, I was, wasn't in a place where I could write it down. Can you yeah, this will be recorded tomorrow, but he, he is, he's doing CRM leads. He's doing age uh, final expense leads. So anything that's a mailer, age final expense, age mortgage protection, and filling it in the blanks with any uh, one month olds, new or instant uh, leads, even sometimes three month old instant leads, but he's making sure he's getting to 50 um, every single week. Now you guys might not have the budget to do that. So maybe you have to start with 20, right? And you're being consistent with 20, you know, on Monday, 20 on Tuesday, 20 on Wednesday, and just going in the CRM every day and buying up what you can. So he said he did like the, the, ma the mailers, um, probably his priority. And if he can't get to his goal 50, he's filling it in with the instants. Okay. Okay. His internet right, got, got knocked out here. Um, <laughs> so any final questions, guys? And we'll end this call. And I, I think it was an amazing one. Go back and rewatch this stuff, you know, three or four or five times. But any any final questions we got? Ryan, where, where are you going to post this one? Same spot everyone's posted on on the rush. Uh, just go to YouTube, go to Ryan Reynolds FFL Rush, and it will be posted there. Give me a few days, and and we'll get it up for you guys to go back and rewatch. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, guys. Hey, thank you for joining us. Um, for everybody that sticked on this this call till the end, to everybody that had their camera on, you guys are uh, gonna gonna win. Okay. So keep t keep learning, keep taking notes, keep notes. being on these calls. Wow. Because you're gonna get better and better. There he is, the man that we lost you for a second. Um, 
I went out. Yeah, I answered some questions for you. I knew the answers, but hey, buddy, I just want to tell you, it's been such a pleasure. I appreciate you uh, being in this business with us. I appreciate you teaching us. I appreciate you being humbly honest about the struggles you went through in the beginning. I think it's very helpful for new agency here that, you know, we're not experts out the gate, but the ones that keep pushing through and being consistent that, that don't have egos and go, well, it's, he's just special and he's getting special leads, but the ones that go, Hey, I'm just going to keep pushing through. And eventually I'm going to learn this, get my confidence up. Anything you want to finally, you know, in this call with Kirby. Yeah, real quick. I see a, a question from Yuri. Um, so with, with live transfers real quick, guys, um, the biggest thing that uh, I can say about live transfers is volume is key. Um, so I use, uh, I use three, sometimes four different, uh, live transfer companies at the same time. So like I'll have all web leads, I'll have data lot, um, I'll have uh, digital market media and I'll have them actually all turned on at the same time. So that way, like if I'm doing live transfers, I know that I'm not like ever really going to have a point where I'm just sitting on my hands, you know, waiting for the phone to ring. So you're a all web leads, um, data lot and digital market media are my three favorite. Now, what do, now you think the, what do you think the budget is for, for new agents to be able to be successful like transfers? Because those do cost a lot more, guys. You got to have some so, capital to make it successful. Some of them. So, like, did the nice thing is, like, digital market media. Um, I'd say sometimes the quality can be a little bit less, but they are only $40 and there's no bidding, right? So, they're a lot less than where with, like, all web leads and... Um, Date a lot, I'd say realistically, if you don't want to be sitting on your hands and you want to have at least a decent flow, um, I would recommend having your bid anywhere between about 90 to 100. Now, for me, since I am kind of like using them to supplement and like since I'm doing other things at the same time, um, it's actually okay to kind of have a lower bid as long as you have a lot of states. I do recommend having at least a minimum of like seven to 10 states um, turned on at the same time. Um, and then you can maybe have, you know, you can get away with a 70 or a $75 bid um, because you're not needing one to come in every 30, 40 minutes, right? It's okay if you end up only getting two or three a day because you know, you are, you are texting, you're doing one call closes, you know, you're doing different things in between, right? Now, so live you... transfers should never, I don't think should ever be used as your only source. It should be used as a supplement. And do you recommend if you're a new agent to start with live transfers? Um, I don't, to be honest, I don't. Um, just because again, like education is a big thing in my opinion for, for virtual sales. So because live transfers, you got it, it's gotta be boom, right? You know, especially if you don't want to get charged, you got maybe 60 to 90 seconds to, to buffer it. Right. So you need to know, Hey, what are the things I got to ask to figure out if I can continue with this person? Right. And then at the same time, you know, you run the risk of, Hey, if I don't really know what I'm talking about, are they going to click a little red button and they're not going to answer my phone call ever again? And, and Daniel did give a lot of tips on live transfers, guys. Go to YouTube, type in his name, Daniel Kirby, and he's given some amazing live transfer advice as well and role play on that too. Hey, buddy, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us again. It's awesome, been a pleasure. Guys. Glad to be You're welcome, here. Ryan. You're welcome to share my uh, share my number with uh, with anyone on your team if they'd like to to personally send me a text. If they uh, have any other questions, need help with anything, you know, you're more than welcome to give it out, and I'd be happy to respond. And, and vice versa, my man. I appreciate you. Awesome. All right, thanks, guys. guys. Thank you.